Hey everyone, welcome back to another video with Notion Workflow. Today I'll be sharing how to set up intuitive database views in Notion, and today's video will be a perspective video as opposed to our conventional Notion Formulas tutorial. If you haven't already, check out my Notion Formulas 2.0 playlist, which will be linked in the video description. I'll be sharing how you might go from idea to database view in Notion by sharing some basic ideas and guidelines I use to create and build stuff. Because I want this video to be accessible to all, some of it might feel very basic for some of my viewers, and so feel free to skip ahead if you'd like, or check out one of my other videos. Let's jump right into it. The way I like to think about database views is like an X and Y quadrant that we might be taught in school, whether that's for very basic graphs, bar graphs, line charts, pie charts. We are trying to see if there is a relationship between an x and y variable where x influences y, right? That is the classic input to output variable and formula that we like to use within academia, and that is where I'd like to start with this video. Again, an x and y axis like this is common in most math classes after a certain point, whether that's in middle school, high school, or college. I think many of us have probably, we've seen this through our education growing up. One way to think about a database view and its customizations are interchangeable x and y variables. So that dimension and that relationship will help define and ground where this video is headed and how you might be able to break down what you currently have or, or for what you're currently building in Notion. This is very basic, but we're going to slowly build on this, like I mentioned. As you think about a four quadrant graph where you have positive and negative integers, that you start to think about in terms of a graph can sort of expand the way we think about database views and how we might build them and shape them from idea to one that works for you. The basic premise to all this is that we want to organize x by y and define what x and y is through a set of constraints, customizations, and features that Notion has available to you and all of its free users. To name a few of these x and y variables, we can think about grouping, sorting, filtering, we can think about a certain property or a name, and then wrap it up within a database view type to start our brainstorming process. When you think about all six of these different ways in which you might want to organize your information, it might become easier to show how x and y might be related within the view that you're creating. And again, if you create one sort of x and y relationship that you might want to illustrate that might allow you to expand into the other three quadrants in which it might be relevant to create another database view. Although these might be commonly used feature the notion, I think when you start to think about the causal relationships between x and y, it's helpful to start with a basic framework like this so that you have a more intuitive understanding of how you might be able to approach any piece of information and how you might want to break it down within several database views. We want to create with purpose, we want to focus with specificity, and we want to emphasize relevancy. And I think when you put all of this together, you can start to have a better framework and approach in which you might want to start building out pages, building out database templates, using one of the properties like we have on this channel, and taking advantage of the various database views that Notion has accessible to you. Again, when you start to bring in the other native Notion automation features, you might have some cool ideas once you have this conceptual, mental, abstract model that you might be able to start using and start organizing your information. Also come up with some general guidelines and some questions to think about when you're setting up intuitive database views. Once you select your x and y variables, then you can move to which database type that you might want to focus on. When you type in database, we have all of these different ways in which we can think about a database view, and this is a very simple and easy way to create a basic foundation in which you want to support your x and y relationship. I won't go over what all of these do because that is covered in one of my other videos and, and in my Notion Basics playlist on my channel as well. You want to start with a database view to align your x and y variables appropriately. And ideally you'll pick a combination of two things and maybe a few things to your x and y variable to add another dimension, x, y, z variable, or just to compare other pieces of information altogether at once. Again, x and y can be a property, a group, 
a sort, a filter, a name, or a view type. And we just want to establish what these variables are and how we might want to break down our information to set up that intuitive database view in which it might be practical to share with someone, to use for daily or repetitive purposes, to create for other clients, or to just simply break down information in a way that makes sense to you. These are some general guidelines that I want to share with you all before I move on to the questions and other things to think about for constructing these views. Like I mentioned already, can we add a relevant formula property for the view? We have the opportunity to filter, group, and sort by a formula property, and I have other examples on my channel where I go ahead and share that as well. Can we add color, and how might we do that? I think icons are very helpful. Emojis can really emphasize certain things, and I think formulas can complement a lot of what you're already doing with the addition of the style formula, the link formula, and the emojis that you can embed easily within a formula output. Obviously, I've said that X and Y can be interchangeable, but I think it's also important to determine which one might be more important to really hone down on your points of emphasis when you're creating a database view. I think something that also gets sort of under mind and underutilized within the notion space in my opinion are automatic properties which are properties in which you can add to any database in which once you set it up it automatically updates based on how you edit things how you create things so on and so forth i've also covered this in another video where for example i set up a grouped view based on last edited time and the recency around that as well. As you start to think about how automatic properties might influence your view, you can also start to think about if the view you're creating is meant to be static, in which you just open up the view and you extract the information that you need right away, or if it's a view in which you are trying to create some sort of action through drag clicking, through buttons, through formulas, through certain interactive properties, and whether it's a view in which you are trying to emphasize the movability around the view and you're trying to create a trigger for a action that you're trying to make within Notion. I think that is synonymous with tracking something versus changing something and how you might be able to break down that database view and in which direction you want to take the information that you currently have in front of you. There's that element of summarizing versus highlighting which are also very basic but very easy things to think about when you start to think about the bigger picture of how you might be breaking down all your information you don't necessarily need to centralize everything in notion but i think it's really great to always build in some hierarchy and attention and detail by thinking about these simple but effective small details that can elevate your view through a quick change or through a series of small things. It also ties into whether you might have many views that make up what you're trying to illustrate versus a singular view that you might need to find what you're looking for. As you might think about how many views you create, it will also be important to think about the size and the direction in which you might want to represent information through a database. Some of the database views have the ability to determine small, medium, and large as the size of what each entry might look like, and some entries emphasize the verticality or the horizontalness of the database view as well. As you can imagine, the more that you dig into database views, the more tweaks you can make to how you can create with purpose, specificity, and relevancy through these basic feature types that Notion has to offer. We start with the sort of X, Y quadrant model, where we try to determine the relationship between an X and a Y variable, where it's gonna follow a similar format to a set of database views and customizations that become interchangeable X and Y variables. And as you start to construct your database views using this principle, you might be able to think about other points of view where you might inverse the relationships between X and Y, think in opposites of what you're representing. Hopefully this is helpful. Obviously this is not a prescriptive way in which we can set up database views. Everyone has a different approach, but this is something that I think I've thought about and kept on in my mind 
without writing down. And so this is my interpretation of my written mental framework and mental model that I've used to get to where I am today. Everyone works differently, so take what you need and ignore what you want. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I have to admit, I haven't made videos in a few weeks. And so these next set of videos might feel a little rough around the edges. Anyways, keep on workflowing.